Hello everyone, welcome back to Math Hands On with Python class and today we are going to see how we can solve for the optimal solution of the transportation problems. So we have this transportation problem here and we are going to assume that we have solved for the initial uh, feasible solution using the northwest corner as we did in the previous lecture. So this is the initial feasible solution of our transportation problem using the northwest corner method with its associated uh, total cost of 6,700. So we are going to start from here to check the, if this initial feasible solution is optimal or not. So the method which we are going to apply in determining whether this uh, initial feasible solution is optimal or not is the stepping stone method. So the stepping stone methods normally require that the number of allocation be equal to m plus n minus 1, okay, where the m is the number of row, n number of column, and therefore you can see our allocations here, we have 5 allocations, and number of rows are 3, number of columns are 4. So if we add that minus 1, you can find that the m plus n minus 1 give us equal to 6, while we have five number of allocation. Now, if that situation occur in a transportation problem that the number of allocation are less than m plus n minus one, we say that our transportation problem is degenerate. So we need to resolve the issue of degenerate. How? We resolve the issue of degenerate by supplying a very small allocation to an occupied cell with minimum transportation cost, okay? so. From these unoccupied cells that we are having here, the minimum transportation cost is uh, two, okay? So we are going to apply either here because they are of equal uh, quantity, then we are going to supply that small uh, allocation or very small allocation, approximately equal to zero, uh, in at this uh, cell uh, two or this one, but make sure the place where you are going to allocate that small allocation uh, is an independent position. So independent position, we mean that uh, when we allocate something here, it, we cannot form a loop with the current or present allocation. For instance, let's say these two were here, okay? If we supply that small quantity here, you can find that the problem will form a loop with this current allocation. So. Uh, even though if the uh, uh, the principle is that you apply that small allocation to a small uh, to a cell with the uh, lowest cost, sometimes the lowest cost you can find that when you place there it makes a loop with the current uh, allocation. So you need to check the next list cost or the next list transportation cost, uh, which is at independent position when you allocate that small uh, resources. Okay, now uh, let's start uh, or resolve this problem by supplying that uh, infinitesimal number, uh, that number, uh, let's say, uh, we call it D, okay, we, we choose to use a letter D, others use uh, other letters, but I'm going to use the letter D and uh, supply that quantity here, okay, so this D represents that small amount uh, in order to resolve the issue of uh, degeneracy. Now, if we supply something here, we are going to have the number of allocation which are 6 equivalent to the m plus n minus 1. So consider now uh, we have this uh, particular table here, okay, which have been also already resolved with this uh, issue of degeneracy. So our letter D, which represents the uh, infinitesimal number, uh, is here, and now uh, after balancing or resolving the issue of degeneracy, now we are in a position to proceed with the stepping stone. Basically, the stepping stone uh, method is used to test whether the current solution is optimal or not. So we start uh, from the unoccupied cell, okay? Each occupied cell is going to be tested by computing the improvement index, or we call net cost change, okay? So we start at this point, and then we jump to a cell which have uh, been allocated, then moving either uh, downward or 
forward or uh, upward depending on the where we are going to find a location and make a turn until we go back to the point where we started. For instance, uh, we are going to check for this one and this one we can either go this way to form a loop, uh, left hand, downward, this way or that way or we can start from here, downward, there, back and we back to this position. So uh, in order now to find this net cost change at this unoccupied cell, okay, we are going to start from this uh, cell with the uh, cost 2 which is cell A3, okay, we are going to compute the uh, net cost change from there. So we start from there, downward, okay, Le then to the left, upward, and then we go back to where we started. And then after forming this loop, uh, we give sign to the corner points, okay? S starting from where we started at this uh, position, we start with plus, then next corner is minus, plus, minus, and then we go back plus, okay? So after having the loop and assigning the signs, okay, now we have to add all the cost, okay, in those turning points of the loop. Uh, with their respective sign as we assigned. So adding them, we are going to end up with this net cost change, which is one, okay? Now, after this cell, we are going again to the next cell, which is A4, which is this one, okay? From there, we are going to develop a loop from the A4 downward to C4, to the left, uh, upward, and then to the right, back to a position where we started and we assign the sign okay plus minus plus and we add all the costs in those corner with their respective sign and we are going to end up with this coefficient which is 4. Next is the cell B1 okay so we move to a next cell which is B1 and we start from B1 to B2 then upward to the left downward and we complete a loop and we give the signs plus minus plus and adding all the cost with their respective sign in the turning points of the loop, then we are going to end up with that coefficient, which is minus two. And another cell uh, is B3. So we are going to start from B3 to C3, to the left, upward, to the right. And we give the sign plus minus plus and we add all the cost in the uh, turning points of this loop and we are going to have this coefficient minus one and the cell B4 also we start from B4 downward to C4 to the left upward to the right and we see that we have a complete loop we give the sign plus minus plus and adding those costs uh, cost in the turning points of the loop, you are going to end up with minus one. So the last cell to compute for the net cost change is the C1. So we start from C1 to C2, then uh, up to A2, uh, to A1, and then back to C1. Give the sign plus minus plus minus, then adding the cost with their respective sign, we are going to have the net cost change of value one. Okay, so after adding that, we have the summary of what we did in the loops, and you can see that we have the net cost change uh, positive and negative. If you find that uh, after computing for the net cost change, all the net cost change are positive, then we say that that current solution is the optimal solution. If the sum of the net cost change are negative, then it means that the current solution is not optimal. It needs a further uh, improvement. So the negative net, net cost change uh, show or indicate that if we allocate something there, there will be a decrease of the uh, total cost that we have currently. So we are going to um, make an improvement at this uh, point here okay to this minus two or we are going to make improvement to a cell with the net cost change of minus two because minus two have a magnitude 
uh, greater than minus one. So we are going to improve here and see what we can reduce from the current total uh, transportation cost. Okay, let's go back to this loop uh, with the minus two. Uh, this loop uh, basically is this one, the loop with uh, minus two, B1, it was this loop, okay? Now from this loop, we need to allocate something to shift some of the quantities applied or the quantity applied to this three corner to this position in order to minimize the current total cost that we are having. So how are we doing that? is by looking the negative corners, okay? This negative corner, we have negative here and negative here. We have uh, quantities supplied here, uh, or material supplied here, that is 700 and 900 here. So you pick the minimum uh, allocation from these two negative corners, and the minimum between 900 and 700 uh, is 700. So what we do, we are going to remove this and we shift it to this cell. And we are not going to do it locally. So we have a principle. We are going to subtract here 3700, adding there, okay? Then subtracting at this corner and adding at that corner. So the new reallocation is going to look like this one, okay? So this is the new reallocation after plus minus plus, as you can see here. So we shifted. Uh, the allocation of B2 to B1, as you can see here. So after reallocating our uh, items, now we need to test again if this reallocation is give us the optimal solution or not. But let's check what we have reduced after this reallocation. Okay, we have managed to reduce this uh, cost from 6,700 up to 5,300 plus 2D. Remember this uh, D is very small and when you multiply by 2 plus 5,000, 5,300, basically it is approximately equal to 5,000, but we make it appear there because it saves us as we see it solves issues of the generous, but at the end it's going to vanish. Don't worry. Okay. Now, we need to improve this solution, okay? So we are going to pass cell after cell for those unoccupied cells to test or to check for the net cost change, okay? Starting with the cell A3, we are going to pass downward to uh, C3, left, up, and to the right. Uh, assigning the sign plus minus plus minus, adding all the costs al along the corners of the loop, then we, we, uh, you are, we, are, we are going to end with this uh, coefficient here. Also, to, for the cell as A4, we are going to start from A4 downward to the left, upward to the right. And we are give the, assi uh, the signs plus, minus, plus, minus, and we add all the costs in the turning points of the loop with their respective sign, and we are going to end up with that net uh, cost change of minus two, or uh, positive two. Uh, the next cell is cell B2. We do the same. We have the loop starting from B2 upward to A2 to the left, downward to the right. And we give the sign plus, minus, plus, minus, and adding the cost with their respective sign, we are going to have the net cost change of positive 2. Again, we go for the cell B3, B3, we go downward to the left, upward to the right to the left downward and go back to b3 this is the wonderful loop okay after having this uh, closed loop we give the sign plus minus plus minus plus minus and then we add all the cost in the turning points of this loop and we are going to end up with the coefficient of net cost change equal to one and uh, the next cell which is b4 uh, we are going to start from B4 downward to the left, upward to the left, downward to the right. Uh, give uh, Assigning the sign plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus, and adding all the costs in the turning points of the closed loop with the respective sign, we are going to end with the coefficient of 
the net cost change equal to 1. And the last cell is C1. We are going to start from C1 to C2, then upward to the left, downward, giving the sign plus minus plus minus, adding the cost to their respective side, we are going to end up with the uh, net cost change of positive 1. And here we have the summary of all the net cost change from the loops that we developed in the transportation problem currently that we were having. And you can see that the net cost change, all the net cost change here are positive. Okay, that means the current optimal solution that we are having is the optimal solution. Okay, therefore, we don't need further treatment or improvement of that solution. And therefore, we have obtained our optimal solution and we can now uh, compute for the total transportation cost, which is the minimum one, we believe. And these are the respective trans uh, transportation schedule from A1 to, from A to uh, dealer 1, A to dealer 2, B to uh, dealer 1, factory C to dealer 3, factory C to dealer 4, and these are associated cost of shipping or transportation, and this is the total minimum cost for transportation. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, and share the content of this video, and click the bell. Uh, to get notification of our new lecture videos once they have been uploaded. Thank you and goodbye.